Islam. Alillahi ibadan futana, talaqu al-dunya wa khafu al-fitana, nadharu fiha falamma alimu, annaha laysat li hayyin watana, ja'alu halujjatan, wa attakhadu salih al-amani fiha sufuna. Yes. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Nihmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'hdi wa nasta'gfiru. Na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Ma yihdihi allahu fala mudilla la wa ma yudlil fala hadiya la. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la. Wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. Salawatu allahi wa salamu alayhi. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن نحن نزلنا الذكر وإن له لحافظون الله سبحانه وتعالى تعالى إن القرآن that indeed it is I Allah سبحانه وتعالى who has revealed the Quran and indeed it is I who will guard it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken an oath has guaranteed to the whole humanity that he subhanahu wa ta'ala will guard the Quran the question comes how? how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guard the Quran? why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guard for example the books that came before the Bible the Tawrat the Suhaf of Ibrahim, the Psalms of David, and so on and so forth. These are all questions that we're going to try to tackle today. How was the Quran written down? How did it reach us today in the books that we have them on our shelves? We read them. We read and live by them. What is the Quran? First of all, we need to understand that today we live in a time of great turmoil and great fitna. And people from each and every corner, they will try to attack the truth. Whoever is staying on the truth, these are people who will be suffering actually. The people who, a lot of times people will think that, well, if I find the truth, my life will be perfect. If I find Islam, my life will be perfect. But that is not necessarily true. Why? Very reasonably and rationally, we look at the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the most, and they were the prophets of Allah. Prophet Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Joseph, Idris, Ismail, Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, actually most of them, majority of them, lived lives that were quite tough. They suffered a lot. We know the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ayyub. We know the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nuh. We know the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yusuf. They suffered, they went through some hard fitness. Imagine if we were going through these. And one might ask, how come? These are the people that Allah loves the most. How come when Muhammad وسلم, died, he had just a few silver coins and a shield? How come? He had all those treasures at his hand. How come he slept on a piece of straw, on that made of straws that left marks? on his back when Omar radiallahu anh, he saw him he started crying how come Yusuf the Prophet of Allah is being surrounded by fitting women trying to get him how come Musa is going through what he's going 
as a child, starting from his childhood, Pharaoh was trying to kill him, being raised in the house of Pharaoh, killing someone by mistake, having to leave, and we know the story. SubhanAllah. Ayyub, how come he's suffering so much, being affected by disease, and so on. Yunus, being swallowed by the whale, by the big fish. So we look at these lives that they left, and they left harsh lives. So we as Muslims, who Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihada, praise be to Allah, who has guided us to this. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihada. وَمَا كُنَّ لِنَحْتَرِ لَوْلَا أَحْنَا هَدَانَ Allah And we were not amongst the guided, guided ones unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide us. We have found Islam. Allah has blessed us with this deen. But Allah also says in the Quran, أَلِفْ لَا مِينَ أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يَكُولُ آمَنُ Two people think, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُ أَنْ يَكُولُ آمَنُ فَهُمْ لَا يَفْتَنُونَ Do they think that they will be left alone to just say we believe and they will not be tested? So we said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Maybe most of you, some of you here are new Muslims or new old Muslims in, like as in my case. It's been some time. However, we've been tested. And around us, there's lots of tests that came from our families, from our friends, from surroundings, peers, and so on. And today, specifically, we live in a time, in an era of knowledge. Not too far down the street from here is Knowledge Village, and Media City, and all these kind of things. Knowledge is proliferated at a very fast rate. You have the internet. You have books, you have phones. I have books on this phone, like this, read. So knowledge spreads very fast. You can go on the internet and just search something and you get thousands if not millions of results. And one of the ways that people are fighting, that people are fighting the truth ways, is attacking its source. And that is, attacking the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Simple. It happened since the beginning. It happened actually since the time when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was in a cave, in a mount called Jabal Nur. And he climbed up there as he would do in Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan. And if you've actually been there, you can, there's, a, there's an opening in front and you can see through it straight to the Kaaba. And imagine that he was there on a night, on a very dark night. No lights as there are right now. There's monkeys around and all kinds of animals. Really, there's monkeys. <laughs> I've seen them. Baboons. And they steal. <laughs> and he's sitting there praying. And all of a sudden, someone comes to him and says, Iqra, read. He got very scared. Imagine. Again, Iqra. This time, this thing grabs him and hugs him. Iqra. And he says, Mana biqari. I'm not a reader. I never, I don't do poetry. I don't know how to read or write. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Allahu Akbar. Khalaq al-insana min halaq. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil-qalam. Allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. Allahu Akbar. Read in the name of your Lord who has created you from a cloth. SubhanAllah. Since that moment, it was open war on truth. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, since the ascension of Jesus, peace be upon him, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it was about 500 so, so plus years. Since then, people have deviated to such a point that they started worshipping Jesus. In 
the other lands, people worshipping idols. In other farther lands, such as India, people were deep in worshipping idols. And the truth was distorted. And even the small group of followers of Isa were killed and exterminated up to the culminating point of the Council of Nicaea with Constantine. Now, after all this time, the world was in darkness. Actually, people were, even today, if you look at Christianity, has been a little bit polished with the whole um, Reformation. It's been polished a bit. A lot of the idol worship has been removed. But still, the main thing that started all of it is still there. Okay? So, the world was actually in big darkness. And here comes a man in the middle of Arabia, in a place that was very pure before, a place that was built by Abraham and his son, Ishmael, peace be upon them, to be worshipped, to worship Allah in it. And then people have gathered idols, as they did in the case of Noah and all. It's actually a repeated story. Different names, different days. But the same thing. People somehow in their psychology need to see something when they worship. So they'll come to you with the excuse that this is actually bringing me closer to the truth or something like that. Even from, may Allah guide some of our Muslim brothers and sisters. So, we, when this happened, when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was given this message, Actually, the whole world declared war on truth again, once again. But what they did not realize is that this was the last testament, the final testament that was sent to mankind. Their last chance. Of course, everything is by the will of Allah. But this was their last chance. Till the day of judgment, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he said, this is your last chance. I've given it to you. I've given you scriptures from before. Many. Anzal Torah, wal Injil. Hudan. Allah has sent many, many books and scriptures entrusted to people, to the religious people. But what they did, يحرفون. They changed the words to gain a miserable price for them. Political preference. Idolatry. Sometimes worship. And many other things. They have changed the words of Allah over and over and over again. Throughout the times. And this is our last chance. Does the Qur'an bring anything new? Well, very, very few things seldom here and there. In terms of laws and reenacting things that people might have not known from before. But in the principle, it's bringing what? Tawheed. This is the main thing that the Qur'an brings. Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. Tawheed. Before it was Isa Rasulullah, and before it was Musa Rasulullah, and before it was Ibrahim Rasulullah, and even before that it was Nuh Rasulullah, and before it was Adam Rasulullah. Salawatullahi wa salam alayhi. But now it's Muhammadan Rasulullah. But you see, nothing changed. That's what Allah is telling us in the Quran. Oh people, like what are you doing? What? Don't you realize? أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder over this Qur'an? Do they not ponder over the speech of Allah, what Allah is revealing? Do they not recognize what Allah is sending to them? Calling them, how can Allah know what's in their scripture? I mean, how can Muhammad know what's in their scripture? Do they not realize that actually what the Qur'an is calling them to is what their own prophets 
have called them to.